The relationship, a confederation relationship, or be it that we missed that opportunity to have taken control of our independence when trusteeship was terminated on October 1, 1960, the date we, the Amazonian independentists, consider our Independence Day, we still managed to secure an element of those rights. I call it the constitutional element that saved us from the Machiavellian plan of La Rupit de Cameroon. How, you will ask. You recall that the prime minister of, of our country, Jungu Foncha, and the head of state, they're all the same. <laughs> Ambassadors don't know. A prime minister is a parliamentary system. Head of state is a, is a, a, a call it presidential system. But I learned by, the, by reading the, the class five file that Foncha had no idea that he has the same status. It was even spelled out there in one of the resolutions, equal status, uh, the agreement, the plebiscite pact, that they were of equal status. So you went there and you were basically intimidated by Hijo to the extent that during the pre-plebiscite talks that happened between October of 1960, and December of 1960, these two heads of state were having discussions on how they were to enhance this independence that both of them have acquired for their country. For the Republic of Cameroon in, October, in January 1, 1960, for the Republic of Southern Cameroon in October 1, 1960. But because they have had, they claim that they've been having some traditional right uh, relationship that they managed from the Ghana. They were so sentimentally attached to the German Cameroon. I don't know why that wasn't extended to Gabon, but that's another story. But just give them that we had messed up taking our independence. We still had a, another opportunity. And this is very important for us looking for the way forward. And it's important we, we, we look at this element where it, it invites the principles of uh, international law where only subjects of international law can be engaged in making treaties. So if you have to ask this question, if the head of state of Republic of Cameroon was negotiating with the head of state or the prime minister of, South, of Republic of Southern Cameroon, I don't wanna call it Southern Cameroon because I hate it. It's almost telling me, why would you give due respect to the sovereignty of the offending state, La Republic du Cameroon. You see it every time people say it in writing. And unbeknownst to us, because of the revisionist history, and we learned that it was done by the fourth committee that was infiltrated by French agents. They made sure that the word republic was never associated with any documentation that was associated with Southern Cameroon. You can go there and do your research. They are still hidden research in the archives. But they say the government of Southern Cameroon, but the government of Southern Cameroon, a government is only a tool to implement this, the, the strategies of governance of a, of a country. You have the functions of a government, that's all. So you, you, you can have several governments or several functions of a government. So when they say the government of Southern Cameroon, it was a deliberate attempt by, the, by then the French and the British, who were now convinced that we were going to become independent and be absorbed by their fear of us getting independent was because we were easily manipulated, and the evidence showed that you know we were uh, we were hanging out with the rough guys in the neighborhood. We hung out with communist folks, and they were fearful that uh, we will become the bedrock of communism in that area where they just have an independent Nigeria and that could destabilize everything. And that is a genuine concern we have to respect. But I'm bringing this because if you 
negotiated for a configuration on just eight matters and you sign it and it became the second alternative. What does that mean? It means the United Nations, the United Kingdom, I mean, I'm renaming the parties that are associated with our constitutional process, and you can throw in France, recognize that the relationship that was to happen from the plebiscite vote was to be a confederation. But I believe that in the minds of Ambazonia, of uh, politicians, they needed some kind of ceremony of independence first to recognize that trusteeship, termination, termination amount to independence. It seemed to me like that's what they need. Otherwise, why do you think happened when the European Union right now is exercising the most dynamic uh, transformation of sovereignties that work together in, in, the, in the dynamics of, uh, European, of, of, of the European treaty where countries can still have control of their armed forces, their treasury, but they have relationship in Brussels which only enhances that sovereignty because it addresses certain needs like it's what the needs of uh, survival in case of warfare and of trade. Those are the two needs that brought European Union together. We know the advantage of gains of trade, so let's collaborate and have a big market. And we are afraid of a mighty, uh, well, now, now it's real. The, UK, the, the current issue is, is manifesting itself. We are afraid of another major war, so let's sit together and so that we should prevent another war. That is why you, you see, confederation can work but it can work only when you have awareness of your own rights within your own territory. But that did not happen for us in 1960s. And I have a suspicion we are still conducting politicking now, unaware that there is a very fast way out of this confusion, as long as we go back to recalling how the truth exists that should never be politicized how we have inalienable rights in this region in where we be, where we belong which can never never be uh, be taken from us and collect and those two should impose upon us the need to cultivate a survival instinct which as homo sapiens can only come through identity that should never be interfered with by the francophonie identity now so you, you understand now that we went to create a confederation. Our people voted on February 11th to create a limited confederation, just as limited, even more than what is happening today at the European Union. And be careful when you hear that uh, the matters of concurrent jurisdictions where this federal government, uh, national budget, and uh, national security, uh, higher education, post and telecommunication, uh, immigration and immigration. When you read those things, sometimes, especially when it's the part of national defense, you think it meant the federal government will have control of, <laughs> of your defense. No, those were like ceremonial guards. Those were like treaties between the Republic of Southern Cameroon. Now we were to be called West Cameroon. Some of us grew up uh, here in West Cameroon state, West Cameroon state and East Cameroon state, where sovereign states by their rights recognize we both should have had seats at the United Nations if we really understood what we were, um, we were <laughs> our entitlement. I, I am not blaming the Francophone because they took advantage of our gullibility. Do you recall that during the Union, uh, so, uh, the U USSR, the, the old Soviet Union, they had four republics seated at the, at the United Nations. They actually had 17 republics. But the only four ones were graduated to qualify as members of the United Nations. Then were Georgia, uh, this is this Ukraine that they're having problem with, uh, Belarus, and 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 and, uh, and Russia. So this is important to note that the concept of confederation is not unusual. It has been practiced everywhere. So why were we unable to? pursue to the logical conclusion, which the negotiated agreement between the head of state of the Republic of Southern Cameroon and the head of state of the Republic of Cameroon. Why? To answer that question, you have to know, know our nemesis, 
our lack of the consciousness of practicing sovereignty politics. That problem persists till now. And I believe it has even increased. <laughs> even, it is even worse now because in the 60s, you only had a, a few people who would do it. Now we have multiplications of governments non correlating to our sovereignty. That just makes us the greatest jokers of the world. It has made the international community just regard us as people who have no clue. If you give these guys independence, they're just going to be probably taken over by, uh, by some other country. That is pos possible. So when you, our people voted overwhelmingly for a confederation, now the question is, was the confederation implemented? You will have to say, how does a confederation get implemented? By the treaties, it stated clearly that there was to be a constitution, constitutional conference between the parties involved and involved the Republic of Southern Cameroon, the Republic of Cameroon, the United Nations, the United Kingdom, the way to now come and convert this pact on the matters that were agreed to as concurrent jurisdiction. Meaning Cameroon will run it, Ambazonia will run it. If there's any conflict of law between the areas where we have our uh, higher education, then we will yield to the federal law. But we were to have our own currency, imagine that. We were to have our own military, navy, air force, excise and, ex uh, and custom duties. All the entrapments of a country, of a, a sovereign country, we were to have them. But we never executed that action. Between February uh, 11, when the uh, plebiscite ended, and October 1, when we were annexed, I hate it when people say we, were, we had independence that day. What kind of independence did you have? You had no independence. You were literally annexed um, and incorporated as part of Cameroon. Just admit it. Don't be, don't, don't have any, there's nothing shameful about admitting that we were next. As a matter of fact, to correct a problem, you need to understand where the problem is. So we never did that. There was no conference that brought us together where you will have the experts negotiate how we're going to manage that quote unquote federal defense. I believe it would have been in the context of some ceremonial guards stationed somewhere in the national capital, which we would have agreed maybe be somewhere in between the two territories. Hello? May I just, yes, may I just please interject for a few seconds? Uh, okay. We, we have a particular time that we have allocated for this uh, event this evening. Okay. So may I also request that you try to also summarize so that we have time also for questions and answers. Thank you. Continue. Good, good. So now you understand that we have rights which are naturally endowed us because they are part of our history. That is also the truth. So when you combine these two rights and the truth, should we now have a debate? Should we be worried? Should we be involved in having problems of people coming in and making politically adjusted decisions about those rights? Should we not admit that we had an opportunity in say at the, at the Mafia conference to have delegated furniture to just go and ask for independence? Granted that that was not done. Should we not admit that what was to happen with that plebiscite was to make a confederation? Should we not use those facts that are clear, indisputable, incontrovertible and claim that what happened in October 1 was pure annexation. Then, then we'll ask ourselves, what is our status in this whole place called Cameroon? Do we have to bear Cameroonian citizenship when we are literally an annexed people and we got our independence? Now, you have to have that kind of predetermined constructs involved in your psychology to be able to find the way forward so that we do not have to always come back and be reinventing the wheel and be begging people to do things for us when they, for instance, they know that we have not even come close to recognizing those rights. If you have to move fast forward, we understand now that for over these years, we have literally almost acquiesced. There's a concept in international law which is called acquiescence. Oh, if you think from 1960 to 1984, 20 years or so, you have not protested your annexation. Then in the 1995, Foncha, before he left, uh, he departed us. In, uh, he and some other fellows, in, uh, then SCNC, visited United Nations 
and and if you go to ask what they came there for it was some kind of diluted complaint about litany of sorrows i call it those minority right nonsense whereas he was supposed to have protested that the play decide terms of the play decide the confirmation was never implemented okay if we are not even thinking about that let's fast forward and think about other actions that la republique du cameroon did which favored us thinking they had sufficiently assimilated us from 1961 when Biya took over in 1984, his first action was to execute a law that dissolved the entire concept of Federal Republic of Cameroon. It was supposed to be called Federal United Cameroon Republics with an S. Sounds similar to Union of Soviet and Socialist Republics. So when he passed Restoration Law 8401 of February 4th, 1984, bingo, we had an opportunity. We, we meaning those of us, those, people who have been annexed by the Cameroon now have an opportunity, if you understand their rights, your entitlement to your sovereignty, to seize back that sovereignty, because sovereignty is never alienated. Sovereignty can only be transferred from one authority, either the United Kingdom or to another one, which uh, BI is claiming to own our sovereignty in matter of one individual of Cameroon. And we protested, and we protested it timely in 1984. The we now is you, the people of Ambazonia, who, by virtue of Restoration Law 8401, the, dissol the dissolution of the fake Cameroon 1961 con uh, Confederation automatically and simultaneously rendered back your, your sovereignty. The state is a principle of international law known as state extinction and state creation. That was the birth of the Republic of Ambazonia. That's why you read the constitutionally originated Republic of Ambazonia, meaning we cannot be doubting and arguing about its existence because it timely saved us from total annihilation. So between 1984 and today, what has happened to a Republic of Ambazonia that has been secured for the benefit of the entire Ambazonian people. Why Ambazonians do not understand this is because we still are promoting anti-sovereignty politicking. The same type of psychology that our grandfathers had, we are doing it, even in greater degree of destruction than we, they did. The same type of competitiveness that is destructive to the purpose of our survival in this hostile system. We are doing it today. So if um, anybody... Uh, well, let me ask a question. Do we really have an agenda for this meeting? Okay. I was told to speak and then... Uh, if, if I maybe, can... maybe Dr. Asson would want to answer that. Or oh, anti next. All right. Uh, we we have we are listening to a presentation that was the sole issue on the agenda, and after that we have questions and answers. Those are the two items. Okay. So I had reminded uh, Mr. Edwin Gang when he rounds up, we are going to have questions and answers, and that will be the end of it. So those are the two points we have on our agenda. Okay. I, I apologize that from the beginning I did not announce it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now I'm just gonna summarize this large chunk of time between 1984 and today. Between 1984, the restoration of our sovereignty now has been established as Republic of Ambazonia. The principle of state succession and state extinction has happened. We have now recovered an identity that was almost annexed and, and absorbed by the Republic of Cameroon. The problem is that we, the people who are the beneficiary of the sovereignty, are the ones now more viciously attacking the sovereignty than even La Republic. Why I say than La Republic? Because La Republic was unable to challenge Republic of Ambazonia in its own court in three occasions. In the military tribunal of 1986, in the Bamenda uh, against Von Gojindinka, the titular head of state. A titular is a word that you need to underline because a cost a, 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 in some kind of titular government for the purpose of showcasing it to the world to show that you have a sense of purpose. So when the Ambassador Restoration Council was looking for leadership, 
uh, there were many people to take on it. Uh, Dr. Fallon was supposed to be the one, but he, he yielded to God's Dinka. Those are the intrigues and the story behind the problem Bazuna that most people don't know. So, well, uh, in the Bamenda High Court case in the 1992, which challenged Cameroon, illegal and forcible occupation of our country, we call the program Bazonia, they could not contest it. And, and it was argued and the judgment default said to Amazonia. There are other cases that I can name international jurisdiction. We have a case in um, uh, the ICJ, the ICJ event. We actually filed our own memorial before, Ke before Cameroon. Okay, so we filed it on June 1995. Uh, seeking to intervene in the in the Bakasi proceedings, we made an attempt to get three countries: uh, less than ten Nauru, and uh, there was another country. Nauru is an island in the Pacific. We dealt with less than ten, and um, I, I believe uh, one other African country, yeah, Equatorial Guinea. But then we noticed that Equatorial Guinea was a little bit too uh, complicated. But those were concrete attempts that we sought intervention. But then the president of uh, yeah, ICJ then was a Nigerian and he sat on a document for the five years and later on, had it not been Madeleine Albright that we sought and got his help, her help, she was then the United, the United States uh, um, uh, permanent representative at the United Nations uh, before she became secretary of state. She took our matter up and brought it to the attention of the Clinton uh, administration and we got some traction at the United Nations. But then it came to a point where the law exhausted itself when they threw the books on us saying we were not a state. We knew going in that we were not a state. We're basically trying to demonstrate, show cause by law. Here's the problem. After doing everything, it became clear to us that we still have to work on our own psychology. We did not know that the report, the, 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 the 2002 decision that came from ICJ would favor us, but you have to interpret the law to serve your interest. Just like I said, in 1960, trusteeship termination is amount to independence. It does not say that, but termination of trusteeship is, is equal to independence. We, we who are in this business to serve our best interest must arrogate that right. In the decision of the ICJ, there was an article in clause 224, which clearly stated that the Bakasi was to be handed to Republic of Cameroon, Republic of Cameroon. Very important to know that. Republic of Cameroon does not have any boundaries with Bakasi. The only international personality that could have boundaries that has the name Bank Cameroon was a United was the Federal United Cameroon Republics that was called the Federal Republic of Cameroon. And in their, in their memorial, in the Cameroon argument, they actually invited that by claiming that because through the plebiscite that this territory known that they known they define us as Western Cameroon, they do not want to use the historic word of Southern Cameroon, but it doesn't matter. But by citing the plebiscite, Cameroon basically yielded to the construction or the deconstruction of the law that is applicable to how these two dissimilar people came to be. Now that it has been proven that the politics of it is our nemesis and that we've exhausted all legal remedies, both domestic and international, what have we done to it? I did not even add the one of 2010 where Dr. Ali Abdul Salam Treki, he was the president of the United Nations from Tunisia, he visited. Yaoundé on the occasion of the 50th anniversary, he handed the President Bia what we consider we have dubbed the, the, the gift of two maps. Why was that important? It was, it was the carryover of the Green Tree Accord of 2006, in which to ensure that the Republic of Cameroon and Nigeria were to have an amicable peace post the Bakasi uh, decision, they had to demarcate the boundaries of these two countries that have been fighting about in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the Bakasi area, okay. Unbeknownst to them, oh, the facts of uh, our, our of of it, the facts of the territorial limits of these two countries at the United Nations define Republic of Cameroon as of independent in 1960, not as it is now, including the annexed territory of Republic of Amazonia. So after they came, they saw that there was a different map. That's why they brought two maps. Why are we not taking advantage of this? Because we are still, just as in the 1950s, practicing anti-sovereignty politicking. 
That is it. There's no other reason. <laughs> to correct that problem, to have a way forward, makes no sense if we don't make the correction of our problem, okay. of that, our problem. So that is why it is very important to know the truth of your history, to know the rights that are integrated with those truths, and to use those truths to now do, do redefine an identity, which is a tool of survival of a species, so that we can survive in this sub-region. Otherwise, we'll be annihilated. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Edwin, for that very uh, brilliant talk. And I think it has been a, a historical lesson as well as a legal lesson.